so I prefer to ask. Yeah. I, <clears throat> a lot of what you say is hearsay. Mm -hmm. So it's really tough. You have to really, when you, when you, 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 we, like you know and have heard, we can't help you directly right. with something like this. Right. Um, an attorney, of course, yeah. and you've kind of been making your way around that realm. Yeah. Well, I'm so poor because what had happened to me, I had so many things happen to me in such a short time. I was attacked by a guy a year earlier. And he hurt my shoulder, and I was charged with a crime that I never committed. I had to go through a whole trial for that. Had to get a public defender. The guy completely lied. It, it's unbelievable, it really is. So I had, I just had my shoulder operated on from this guy that attacked me, and it was three weeks prior to this incident, February fifteenth at the municipal building. And so they were twisting my arm around. I told him my shoulder was operated on. It's just. And I just went over to the attorney general's office, too, and told him that whole thing, too. Okay. So when I, what I was going to say is when I got out of jail, they had taken my phone and my tripod and everything, so I had to get my phone back. They said they had a warrant for the stuff on my phone because I had the video. Well, they actually accessed my phone without having a warrant, and I can prove it. So that's another issue, yeah. So when I got my phone and everything, I went right to the sheriff's department, which is in the same building. And I told the sheriff, I said, I want to file a complaint. That guy attacked me with verbal just craziness. Like he just went off like he was, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to handle this in court and we're going to, uh, I believe my deputies. He's yelling at me. Yeah. But that's how he was. Okay. That loud. And I just got out of jail, and I just simply said, yeah, I'd like to file a complaint against this officer because they refused to give me their name and badge numbers. I asked for all their names and badge numbers. They refused. Um, when you say you've talked to an attorney, have you talked to, like, Midpen Legal? I haven't talked to them yet, no. Well, let me give you a number for them because they, they may be able to help you. I'm just not sure. I ch actually tried them before with my custody cases and they never helped me with my custody case they never helped me but well it doesn't hurt to ask okay. you just don't know who is specializing at the time and what they can do or yeah. not and they'll tell you as you know yeah i mean right now i spend all my time going to the doctors and going to court basically that's all i do and, of course, here. Because you can't speak for anyone else. Yeah, when people are in those situations, yeah, they're going to be upset and things are going to be said. Right. And you have to be more concerned with you and documenting your situation. I know it looks at, like the big picture is pretty lousy, and it may very well be, but you can't prove that. You've got to focus on one thing. So when you ask for help, just say, I need help to say what I can and can't do in this situation. The rest of it is true. It, 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 you can't relay it properly. It just becomes hearsay and it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. So focus your energy on what happened to you. Okay? Yeah. That's about the best way I can suggest. Yeah, so it's been a complete nightmare. I can imagine. And the guy that attacked me the year and a half before, I was supposed to, I was doing a renovation job at his house for his daughter, at his daughter's house. And then he agreed to pay me this final payment. And I said, well, he, he gave me some money. And I said, well, where's the rest of the money? And he goes, what do you mean? And I'm picking up the money. I go, well, you owe me like $1,000 more. And he goes, I'm not paying for that. And just grabs the money, tries to take it out of my hands. And, of course, I didn't have any witnesses. Yeah. So that's why I document everything now. So, but we put him on the stand he denied getting any texts or emails or anything. And we actually read off. I had 140 pages of texts and emails. He went off on the judge. We read him what he said. And he goes, oh, no, I don't remember that. But just to go through that whole experience, it was so traumatic. At one point, I was so upset, I had to get on medication because I couldn't stop shaking. That's how bad I was. So I lost a job because I have a, they list your docket, you know. So I was going to start a job doing step-in walk-in tubs as an independent contractor. Well, of course, they didn't want to hire me because now i got a criminal record. I was charged with two felonies and two misdemeanors. 
then it's still on my record. So I have to pay to get it expunged, $155, and then get a state police background check. And I'm the victim. That's, you know, the craziness. So I was going to go look, talk to the representative for, you know, Carlisle and that area and go to, the, like, a state rep and see what they say about it. But it's just absurd. So I had, I got my shoulder operated on because he had knocked me down to the concrete and it tore uh, the labrum in my shoulder and the doctor said that I had to put the most amount of sutures in there to fix it. <clears throat> so I, I was in a sling for six to eight weeks. It's still, I can't even lift my arm up. So, but I've become so poor at this point because of everything that's happened to me, I cannot sustain myself. I can't even pay my electric bill. I'm behind in my mortgage, the whole nine yards. It's a long story, but I yeah. Know. I know. And I'm, I'm it's just like a cascading effect, you know what I mean? I even tried to get a job at a little shop at one point as a, as a sales customer, and I couldn't even get that job because they pulled up my record and saw it. <laughs> what, do, what, did, what, what do you actually have? Oh, they, the guy, I actually tried to file a civil criminal complaint against the guy for robbery and assault, simple assault. They turned around, after I filed that, they turned around and charged me with robbery, bodily injury, F2 and F3, simple assault, and M1 for taking the money. Yeah. And I don't have a record. My records, if you've ever seen a, a docket sheet, a discovery thing, zero, 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 the whole way down. But now I have this thing against me, which, you know, all I was doing is going to film a public meeting. Do you ever look into victims' advocacy? No, that's the other thing I was going to try to look into. That's what we I mean, I don't know what this program is exactly. I'm just trying to find one. Senator Fulmer's office? Yeah. What method? Not the report. I've basically had a constant headache since this thing happened to me. My head is just like constant ringing. See, I did go to the um, the courthouse, and I went to the place where you do the record. She gave me the sheet that I fill. She goes, you know, to fill it out, because I could do it pro uh, pro se. I could do it myself, but it still costs one hundred and fifty five dollars. Plus, you have to do the state police thing. That's interesting. You have a way out of that. I know you can't do it at the moment, but it's. I just. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. The one attorney that told me about the Lebanon County thing, I actually hired him at one point. I hired him by using my credit card because I have no money, so I had to use my credit card. He, he actually showed up at the wrong time at one of my hearings, and they issued a warrant for my arrest. That's how good he was. So he did absolutely nothing for my case. He actually hurt my case. But How many people are turning? I'm not yeah. sure I understand that. It's very frustrating. But um, try contacting them okay. and see if they can't give you some avenues to try. I know that we're kind of, when it comes to anything judicially, we, we really, our hands are tied. There's nothing okay. So that's all that whole stuff. And so then the other reason I was here... Because originally, wa I walked these halls for weeks and weeks when I was fighting for equal custody of my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I, it was House, Bo House Bill like 463 or something like that, presumption of equal custody. They never hurt, had a public meeting on that or anything. But what had happened to me is I, got, I had equal custody. It never, she never was able to take my daughter away. Mm -hmm. And I raised her all by myself. And she's 16 now. But we have always done the taxes every other year, claiming, you know, right, on taxes. Off the yeah. Dependent. Until she decided to pull this on me last year or the year before and take my taxes away. 
So now I'm in a fight for that. So, and what had happened to me, not only did she file wrongfully, but because she filed, the IRS just holds my money, and don't, I don't get anything back. They've held my taxes for two years now. And you've contacted them? You can't, I tried to contact them. Have you them. tried contacting your federal level congressman? Um, yes, and they, I got to run around with them, too. And that's what this thing here, they wanted me to do a Privacy Act release so they could investigate. And they just basically told me, well... If you don't have paperwork to prove that you have your daughter half the time and where she goes to school and this, this, and that, there's really nothing you can do. So now I'm in the process of trying to find all the paperwork when I took her to the doctors and all the other stuff. Yeah, and they asked for a lot of documentation. There's no question about that. Um, so that's the next step on the list here. Senator Toomey. Okay. Toomey. You know, um, and it's bad enough. I, I, I just have my phone. Okay. Well, that um, I lost my whole career fighting for my daughter. I have a degree in biology and minor in chemistry. I lost my whole career. I actually was accepted into two medical schools at one point. Um, but it just destroyed everything because all I would did when I had my job, I spent all my vacation just going to court all the time. Oh boy. Anyway, so I would also take a look at the IRS website and they, they have tax issue resolvement situation, I mean or access online and see if there's something you can do. Yeah, that. the only thing I found that said about the IRS, it said like uh, adjusted gross income, mm -hmm. like whoever has the higher adjusted gross income, then they're entitled to get, to claim them on taxes, but they pay the support, you know what I mean, because now they have the higher income and I have equal custody. But I actually do have a a support hearing coming up because I, I couldn't resolve it with any of the people that I called, so I decided, well, I need to file for a support hearing so I could right. get the information out on the, the table. But I guarantee you, that's, they already tried to talk me out of filing when I went there the first time. Are you sure you want to file? Are you sure you want to file? Domestic relations? Yeah. But that hearing's coming up. But my hands are tied at this point. Uh, it's in York County. Oh, it's in York County. It's like, yeah... I only make about 180 bucks a month at this point because I lost all these job positions and now I'm so hurt. There's even more of this story that I'm not even telling you, but yeah, I had a lot of stuff happen to me in a short period of time. So I'm just fighting just to hold on. Okay. <laughs> and then to take my tax return now, yeah. And my daughter competes in a, like an expensive sport too. She rides a dirt bike. And so, you know. Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah. yeah. Good grief. So she tells me, yeah, I want a new dirt bike. I'm like, yeah, all right. I can't even pay her electric bill. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah, there's some <clears throat> reality on that one as well. And I, I wish I could suggest more, but that's about all I can do. Yeah, so I'm going to go see Senator Toomey. Now, he's over on, like, Walnut Street or something, right? Because I have it. The federal building, Walnut Street, 228. And I had a really bad response with the Democratic, Bob Casey's office. Um yeah, I will never vote for that guy ever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's 228 Walnut Street. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you know what happened, and it was the same thing when, I, when we did the whole custody and support thing, when we were trying to advocate for the whole equal rights of everyone. Mm -hmm. We always got pushed off on someone else. We would say something, like we would come to your office, we went to all the representatives, and they say, that's a federal issue. Then we go to the federal people, and they'd say, that's a state issue. We could never get uh, anyone to put it in concrete. Okay, who's responsible? 
like the whole taxes. I, I guarantee you when it, I go there, it's a lot. Be... It's, it's, it's once it's when it's custody, when it's in the courts, it's it's really out of all of our hands. I mean, well, the bad part is, is the person that gets support, whether it's the man or the woman, they get that tax-free money. They don't pay tax on that when you get it on your taxes. And then the person that actually pays the money, they don't get to claim it as an exemption. So it's like a double whammy for the person that pays support. And it's just crazy. That's why you see these people that flip out. You see it all the time. And people wonder, oh, yeah, he had mental issues. Yeah, I bet he did. It is not an easy thing to navigate. You're right. I know people that were homeless and did all kinds of... We had stories of guys that, that were living in a field because they lost their house because the woman said, well, he abused... They make these false PFA claims, you know. Yeah. And it's just a nightmare. But, yeah, it's... So I don't understand why, you know, that House bill for presumption of equal, equal custody, that never even got heard on. The Coalition Against Domestic Violence came in, and they tried to say, that's going to cause more domestic violence. Just stuff like that, yeah. So the public never heard it. A lot of people really don't know what really happens until you actually get involved with something like that. P people think, oh, yeah. A lot of that money doesn't even go to the child anyhow. It's, there's Title IV funding. A lot of people don't know about that. It's a kickback from the federal government. For every dollar they collect, they get money from the federal government. That's why they're all after collecting child support. When I did this, like in 2003 or four. It was a number of, like, Pennsylvania collected, like, $3.4 billion from the federal government for child support. Okay.